Hey everybody, it's Sean with The Good Dog, and in our continuing series of do-it-yourself or how-to videos, um, we're going to go over the most commonly used e-collars that we commonly use. Uh, so let's dive right in and uh, see if we can keep this concise and to the point. Not my strong point. Okay, so first we're going to start off with the micro educator, right? So this is a fairly new product. And this is from eCollar Technologies. All of the eCollars that we use are from eCollar Technologies. And it's their, currently, it's their smallest, um, smallest receiver. Um, it's not tremendously smaller from the one I'm about to show you, but it's a bit lighter. Um, is the actual size a little bit smaller? Yeah, so it's a teeny bit smaller, but it's, it's mostly lighter, right? Yeah, okay. So, um, Anyways, so this is the micro. Um, apparently, word on the street is there's a nano coming. So God only knows how small that'll be. Let me just open this up, show you a quick little, quick little trip through. So the transmitter or remote, which doesn't want to come out, is the same, I'm pretty sure it's the same exact size as the actual mini educator that you've probably seen a million people use. Um, so we'll go into why I like the mini educator actual remote uh, ergonomically in a minute, but um, I dig the purple, by the way. And then here is the actual receiver. And you can see it's, it's you know, I'll give you a little bit of, you know, like on my hand, how it looks. You know, so you can kind of see, it's not teeny tiny, but pretty good. So, and this comes with a uh, um, uh, an adjustable adjustable rubber st <laughs> rubber stamp <laughs> rubber strap that um, once you fit it to your dog, then you can cut whatever ex excess because they've got it like built for a dinosaur. Anyways, so this is the micro, and for your teeny tiny dogs. Um, three, four, five pounders, this is the way to go. Um, you can also use it for very, very, very sensitive um, bigger dogs. The actual output from this uh, stimulation-wise is slightly uh, less, slightly milder than the mini educator. So that's that. Comes with all the usual goodies and, and I'll dive a little bit more into the details with the, uh, with the mini, which is the more common one. Okay, so. Here is the mini educator. This is the super common one. You probably see dog trainers all over the internet using this. This is the uh, pretty much go-to. So the reason that this is pretty much the go-to is that the, the level of STEM, this is actually, I mean, if, if you think about it, the mini educator, it's meant for it was typically meant for smaller dogs or lower, you know, lower, lower sensation, which is typically like your smaller dog uh, situation. But what, what ended up happening is that the, the mini educator ended up kind of being pretty much what everybody needed for about 99% of dogs. So this is the remote for the mini educator and it's just a different color than the micro. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same size. And um, we've got all the buttons and gadgets that go along with it. Let me pull out the actual receiver so you can see a little bit of the difference. Once again, you're not gonna see a big difference, but there's a, it's, it's, it's slightly thicker. It's slightly more bulky than, than the, the micro. Really curious to see what the nano is gonna look like, but that's what the, mini looks like and once again comes with the adjustable rubber st stamp rubber strap uh, so once you fit it to your dog then you can uh, rock and roll and have it custom fit so with that and I'm gonna dive a little bit more into detail with this one rather than doing it with both so of course it comes with charger right so you don't need batteries anything like that this is just something you can charge 
uh, we typically will just charge them overnight, um, every night. If you want to be really anal about it, you can charge them, you know, every couple of days. The, uh, the lights change on this and <laughs> on this as the battery starts to diminish. So it does give you warning, letting you know, like, hey, I'm getting low. Hey, I'm out. And so you need to recharge. We just recharge them uh, every day, which just um, circumvents that, that problem. So on this one, if you come in closer, you'll see it's got the regular contact points. These are just the short contact, the short standard contact points that come out of the box on the receiver. And th these were great for a lot of dogs. Any dogs that have just your standard fur length. So your, uh, your pitties, your pity mixes, your... Um, labs. What's that? Labs. Dalmatians. Could be labs, could be Dalmatians. Um, it's going to work for a lot of dogs. And, um, but that said, what also comes with it... Um, I think this is them, yes, are some longer contact points. And these will be hard to see. Do you want me to take them out? Is that what the hands? Hand. I'm trying to see what the hand signals are for. It's a fly-by-night operation, guys. So, all right. So what I'll do is check it out. I'll do a little comparison, seeing as we're just flying by the seat of our pants. So here's what comes standard. And here, actually, let me do it like that. Here is the difference in size with the longer fur contact points. So both of these come in the box, um, be it your micro or be it your mini, and you just use the tool in here and it unscrews, you put these on, screw them in, and you're good to go. So for most dogs, you should have a pretty good shot at having either these or these uh, the, the, the longer uh, for uh, contact points or the, just the longer contact points doing the trick uh, for whatever you need. That said, there are dogs that these contact points will, will, will be challenging to have successful contact with. And in that case, then there are thick fur contact points. There's a multitude of options. If you go to ecollartechnologies.com, there's the wings. Um, a lot of trainers are using the wings. We use the wings with a lot of dogs. Um, the wings tend to really get great contact even with thicker fur dogs. So there's thick fur contact points. There's uh, hypoallergenic contact points. There's really short ones. There's uh, the wings. There's titanium wings. Like the 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 mind reels at the options so anyways that's the basis or the basics with the uh, with the mini educator and like i said we use these on probably 95 percent of the dogs that we work with the uh, the stimulation level zero to 100 um, which is also the same as the micro zero to 100 um, gives you a lot of flexibility um, it allows you to really fine tune it precisely to the dog's needs in that moment, up or down, whatever you need. Um, and the higher levels tend to work for dogs, even like more serious dogs that go into more serious drive, but there are exceptions and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but what I wanted to really get into is that what I like about this is that compared to a lot of other remotes, ergonomically in your hand, this fits really nicely. And the way we set it up is we only use the red button and we set the red button just to be continuous. So that means as long as you tap, so you can give it, do a quick tap and you're off, or you can do a longer press and hold, or you can do a seriously longer press and hold if you're doing teaching at very low levels and things like that. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, the reason we like that is because that puts your middle finger at the red button, which frees up the, the uh, index finger and the thumb to be able to roll and dial like this. I'll give you, let me turn it on. And you can see it, and you can see that I can actually flexible, uh, flexibly move the dial really easily, and I could tap, 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 boom, I need to go higher, oh, I need to go lower. Okay, let's, let's work from this, four or five, you know, something like that, da 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 da. So, Anyways, that's how, uh, that's how that works, and that's why I like the ergonomics of, of, this, um, 
of this remote. And the mini educator works the same. Now, the, the, the wild card in this mix, let me just turn this off. The wild card in this mix is the boss. And we don't have a boss here. So um, somehow our, our last one just got used, not somehow, but um, our last one just went out uh, with the dog. And so we don't have one to show you right now, but the boss is basically the same exact thing. So if you think about the micro, the mini, the boss, that's how they're stacked as far as intensity levels um, and size. So, so the micro is gonna be a little smaller, um, mini a little bit larger, boss a little bit larger on the receiver, but also different than these two, the boss is also gonna be a little bit larger with the actual transmitter or the remote. So um, it's black and it's just a little bit larger. So if you have really small hands, some, some folks can struggle with it. Also, you get a longer distance, longer range with the Boss than you do with the Micro or the Mini. So those are the collars that we use for all the dogs that we work with. Um, one of those three options, sorry, I don't have a Boss to show you. And then uh, the last thing I was just gonna show is that we use these a lot with a lot of the dogs, which are um, just, are these the e-collar tech ones? Yeah, so they're the e-color technologies. This is like an e-color tech endorsement um, with Bungie. So you see this little thing right here and you're like, what the hell is this? So basically your e-color goes on here, your, your, um, your receiver. And so that'll be on here. And then what happens is then you can adjust it. There's also, there's a, there's a multitude of, of, of options with these. You can get some that have quick snap clips and things like that. There's all sorts of different things that you can add to it to make it really easy once you, once you get it set and then you can just clip and have it on and off easy. But the whole, the whole deal with this strange looking thing, the bungee, is that it allows it to breathe and flex. So if your dog lays down a certain way or if when you put it on, your dog happens to have uh, their neck extra flexed, um, which a lot of dogs will do when you're, when you're putting on a collar, they'll, they'll tend to tense up like in the way that uh, a horse would if you're going to put the saddle on the horse, right? So horse people know that you put the saddle on the horse and then you tension it up and then you gotta go back and tension it again because the horses tend to like this, that's my horse impersonation. impersonation. And, then, uh, and then you've got to go ahead and tension it again once they relax. And the same thing ha happens for a lot of dogs, uh, especially really muscular dogs. You'll see with a lot of your pitties where their necks will just like, you'll go to put the collar on and that'll be like And then you're like, oh, that's a great fit. And then you come back a, a couple of minutes later and it's like so this really helps because you can get it nice and snug, but then you know it's still gonna have some flex and some, some give. So if it's nice and snug, but then your dog moves in a certain way that would cause it, you know, physiologically the motion or movement of the neck would cause this to uh, become loose, it takes up that slack. Or if your dog is exercising really strenuously and, it, and their, their neck expands, then it has the, the ability to expand like that. So what you don't get is this kind of static fit with contact points pushing into your dog's neck and that no matter what happens, you know, if you've got a static fit, then if your dog's neck expands, then there's more pressure against these contact points. And if your dog's neck contracts or the motion of your dog's neck causes it to remove this this contact, then you get less contact, and which is a bad thing. What we're looking for with e-collar work especially is consistent contact. So we really recommend these. Um, once again, e-collar technologies has a, a, a multitude of gadgets, devices, upgrades, changes, and uh, things that you can um, kind of put together to create your own best stuff for your own dog. So. Those are our e-collar options. Um, once again, e-collar technologies, you can go to ecollar.com and you can just surf all of their sales options, all of their gadget options and go from there and find out what works best for you. But I would suggest mini educator for most dogs, micro for the teenies, boss for the, for the heavy duty, and doesn't mean they're big dogs, but boss for 
the dogs that have got majorly high drive, dogs that can, that can blow through things when they get into prey drive and things like that, or even play drive with other dogs, you may find that you need a boss if they're blowing through a mini, something like that. So um, that's, that's our e-collar stuff, and um, hopefully that's helpful for you guys.